Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including the Quantum Zone, this, that, or the third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capes and lunatics. Hope to see you there. Hi, this is Dan Jurgens, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Diggity dink. Hello and welcome back to another week of Nightwing, the Nightwing News, new Nightwing News. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is... Hello, I'm Kristen. All right, and again, this is uh, our first one of the month, so it'll be our new issue review. Got, well, last week's World's Finest Teen Titans number three, Nightwing 106, and Titans number three. See, I got the Wally West cover. Oh, very nice. And as I told Kristen, I will talk about Dick's really brief appearance in Catwoman number... 57 this week, uh, Gotham War Part 3. Well, why don't you start with that? Actually, wait, let's start with this. Hmm. Did you know Wendy's has DC toys and Nightwing is in a pack with Batman and Catwoman? I did see that, like, I think last week, but I didn't know if they were out yet. Oh, oh, nice. They're out. I didn't know if they are out. Nice. There's his little card that comes with it. And I was cracking up because on the back, it says his name is Richard Grayson. <laughs> so if you go to Wendy's and you want just the Batman Night We Won, you need to ask for number two. It's box number two. Box number two. All right. Because I've been to, I went to Wendy's yesterday and today to get it. And the one I went to yesterday, they didn't have it. So I got number four. So I got Batgirl. Batgirl Flash and Gorilla Groove. Oh. But this nice. Wendy's today had number two. Yeah. And they come in different colors too. I mean, obviously, as you saw, everybody in there is all one color, but my Batgirl one is green. You heard it here first, kids. The college professor got her kids' mail. Darn right, I did. I'll be that. I was gonna say, sometime in the next few days, I'll be getting mine. It's pretty good. Sometimes the kids' meal is just the right amount. Yeah. Can't overeat. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay, now you can go on to the next thing. <laughs> oh, thank you, ma'am. All right. So, have you been, have you read the first? Two parts? <laughs> no, no, no. Have you read the first two parts of uh, Gotham War? Uh, yeah, yes. So you know what's going on about why Catwoman and Batman are disagreeing. Yes. Okay. So yes, kids. So uh, yes, yeah, Selena is trying to organize all the crime where they only like rob you know non-violent and they rob from the rich you know basically the whole robin hood thing and batman's like no 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 we can't choose you know you know what crime is okay and what is not especially after uh a cert certain wealthy wealthy gentleman is accidentally killed and uh leaves behind a, a a a son with no parents hmm i wonder if why batman's taking this personally right what? well i know before we even okay i guess yeah keep telling us about it and then we can well, and then and then, and then the whole Zernar fail safe that Batman basically put in his own head is you know Zernar is basically like rattling the cage doors, like trying to get out. So, yeah, Bruce isn't. Uh, yeah, he's fighting to uh, a battle on the in inside and outside. And at the end of part two, we saw uh, a someone has bought in Wayne Manor and discovered the Batcave and discovered Bruce Wayne as Batman, and that person is. Vandal Savage. Yes. So a couple of questions. Yes. One, whose va uh, villain was Vandal Savage originally? Who, what, whose enemy was he? Yeah. I mean, has he been um, a Batman enemy or? 
I I th- think he's he's taking his turns with everyone. Um, I'm trying to remember, he may be like I know he's fought the Flash before. Uh, he might have come after like uh, a lot of the Justice League. So I'm trying. Hold on, let me look this up. Bano Savage. I'll tell you where his first appearance was. Uh. Yes, kids, because, again, he was a caveman who uh, got exposed to a meteor, as many DC villains were, and, uh, yes, gained immortality. Uh, why is it when I'm looking for that? I can't find it. Uh, oh, his first appearance was Green Lantern number 10 from 1943, so Alan Scott was his first uh, opponent, so... Yes, uh. he's he's fought in the Justice Society, the Justice League, and very you know solo and team. So yeah, he's been around. So yes, he's found. Yes, yeah, so now he owns. He he actually went to the bank and bought Wayne Manor. <laughs> All right, but yeah, so we so that's where we open up on in Catwoman. But then, uh, as as you know, Jason's kind of on uh, Selena's side right now. So. Wow. Right. What are your thoughts about how the rest of the Bat family is behaving? It's weird because in like the first couple parts, it almost seems like everyone's saying, "Yeah, no, Bruce, we should try this." Except for Damien, like, because Batman and Robin number one came out. A new Batman and Robin number one came out last week, and it's basically uh, Damien's moved back in with Bruce into the townhouse, and uh, you know, it's basically like, "Oh, it's just you and me now, kid." You know, because everyone else is. Uh, you know, questioning me. Yeah. But yeah, this is, but in this one, uh, Selena and her crew are basically like uh, casing this uh, ballet. Or, I, think, I think it's a yeah, ballet. And uh, so, meanwhile, Jason's outside is a distraction. He's basically holding Bruce off. They're basically they base they're basically fighting in the streets and stuff. Uh, uh, it's so funny because like Bruce is like swinging at Jason. He goes, "Didn't realize I trained you to be a fan of ballet." And Jason goes, "You want to believe I'm a dumbass so badly, Batman, dude? I read Jane Austen. That is the oh, best. Oh, is that the one? Is that what just happened this this week? Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's the best. That is the one of the funniest things ever. Jason literally goes, "Dude, I read Jane Austen." <laughs> That's true. That is true. Yeah. So. Okay. So wait. What is Dick doing this? In this oh, okay. Book? So he appears on one page. So like while Selena's still at the ballet, she's like goes out on like a like a terrace or a balcony or whatever, and uh, she's like, "I know you're there." And Dick kind of like drops down, and she's like, "How'd you know I'd be here?" And she's like, "Did Jason tell you?" And he goes, "No." He goes, "I just knew you'd be here. It's your favorite ballet." All right. I'm gonna do this line for line. I know this is your favorite ballet. I got to see it with you and Bruce, remember? It was one of those one of the first things you let me tag along to. You let me sit at the bar with you. I got a Shirley Temple, felt super grown up. You said it was your favorite ballet and asked me what mine was, like I had one. I think I said the nutcracker. Embarrassing. <laughs> that is embarrassing to say the nutcracker is your favorite ballet. He was so a pedestrian. Kid. He, was a kid. He, was a, he was a circus kid. Come on. This is <laughs> So she goes, Dick, you talk like that, and it makes me feel so stupid that we're all fighting. And the last thing he says is, yeah, Selena, maybe chew on that. So our boy tried to be the voice of reason. I think because last time when they had, um, it, it felt weird that everyone was kind of trying to, like, beat Bruce up. But Bruce also felt really weird. I mean, he seemed really intense and angry and like. Rah, rah, rah. Well, that, well, that's the Zuranar influence. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I definitely have seen some stuff. Um, where people have been. Like, oh, I think the Bat Family is really out of um, character in a lot of. Of that, I mean, Jason feels more in character, but they're like, why would basically everybody else aside from Damien not 
Yeah. Going. Yeah. And I, I guess it's weird. I Yeah. And it's weird to me because I don't think that. I mean, I don't, I don't think that any of them would, I think they would be like, oh, Selena has somewhat of a point that like violent crime is down, but obviously this isn't the solution. I don't think they would just roll over because I mean, it just particularly seems kind of ridiculous because of what's happening in Nightwing because Dick knows what the solution is. You take money. So it's like if Selena was saying we're stealing some money and then we're going to make it so these people stop stealing or something like that, that I feel like would be more convincing. Yeah. And again, it's like, where's the line? It's like, eventually you're going to, you're going to rip off every rich person. And it's like, do you drop, keep dropping it? Or it's like, yeah, we can go after just people who make not a little less little. I mean, where's the line? And again, as we, as I said, there's already one casualty, you know, it wasn't intentional, but. Right. Unlike now Dick is the rich person. Exactly. But again, I want to see that flashback of him as a kid at the ballet with uh, Bruce and Selena. Oh, yeah. So what ballet were they at? Was this one like? I th- um, no. Which one was this? Um, no, it's one of those big, <laughs> fancy name ones. Uh, uh, tur- Turndo, uh, T-U-R-A-N-D-O-T. Oh, wait, no, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Turned, turned up, turned up, turned up. I, so, I sound like de- I sound like a ten year old Dick Grayson. <laughs> oh, well, that says it's classified as an opera. Well, they said. Well, that was the thing because, like, the Riddler gave Batman a clue because there was there there was an opera and a ballet that they could hit in, in there. Like, ah, well, this season the opera is not doing that, but the ballet is so. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. So it was misdirection. I haven't seen this one. It is set in China. Follows the Prince Caliph who falls in love with Princess Torando. Ah. But yeah, there's a there's a lot of uh, Bruce and Jason fighting in this issue. Mm. makes sense yeah i mean that part made sense yeah it just like a lot of the and it, it just, I, I just applauded x i'm like it's about time that takes the voice you know trying to say hey everyone let's try to be reasonable because i, I there's only there's only one other person who could do that and could put an end to this thing if they would let him come back from the dead we need alfred to come back and be like you know what you all just sit down and shut up right yeah. Yeah, because it doesn't, I mean, particularly since Dick is, you know, now a rich person and he's trying to solve crime, he knows that you don't solve, they all know you don't solve crime by just moving to different crime, but he's trying a lot harder than, yeah, I don't know. It just is kind of weird. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, you you know, and especially, you know, especially if you rip off enough of the, Enough of these rich people. Again, it's Gotham. You're going to find one of these rich people who are like, uh, let's hire somebody to kill these people. Okay. Right. You rip off a rich person and they become, you know, a vigilante. Who would think that would happen? <laughs> oh, that's right, though. That was one weird thing that, again, I understand. Sometimes it's like, it's annoying and I just had to let it go because it's like, this is comics so they just do stuff for the plot. Yeah. But it's like, why when Dick came into all that money, would he not have bought Wayne Manor back? <laughs> I could see Bruce being prideful and be like, no, 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 waste your money. You know, you're doing good works with what you have and stuff. And Yeah, but I could also, but Bruce is also super paranoid and the bat cave is under there. So I could also see him being oh. like, yeah, buy it and I'll pay you back or something. <laughs> I guess, yeah. But again, it's not like Bruce is like poor. I think he's like down to like his last million or two. You know, he, I mean, he's got he still has a pretty nice townhouse, but yeah, it's not the. Plus, I think a lot of it too is I don't think Bruce wants to be at the mansion without Alfred. Well, yeah, that could be too. 
So. Well, it'll also be interesting now that they've got this new Batman and Robin. Yes. And what's going on? Like, what are they going to do with Tim since they ended his ongoing? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Because, well, well, Jason doesn't have an ongoing either. But Jason, yeah, like I said, Jason was big in this Catwoman issue. But, yeah, Tim's kind of, you know. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, well, I mean, I, it's like none of the girls have a, none of the bad girls have an ongoing either. Well, yeah, well, Cass is in uh, the new Birds of Prey book uh, that just started. Uh, like, okay. Was it two weeks but ago? But Barbara is not in that one. Not yet. That? Not yet. No, yeah, no, no. Because I talked to Kelly Thompson, who's writing it. Then, uh, yeah, it's the Black Canaries putting together a team for something, and Barbara's not in it. But there's like a whole conspiracy thing where it's like, we can't tell Barbara. We can't tell Barbara. So, you know, Kelly basically told me it's like, yeah, Barbara's going to show up eventually, and, you know, it's going to hit the fan. So. Harley's in it though too. It's, it's, oh, actually, speaking of Harley, did you finish Harley Quinn the show? I didn't watch. Oh, was that the? Is it? Uh, what was last week the finale? Because I didn't watch last week's yet. Yeah, no. I think so. I mean, it was the tenth episode. Oh yeah, it must have been then. Because oh yeah, I forgot about that. So yeah. Uh yeah, you should watch it. Well, yeah, especially soon just to finish it out. Uh, I'm pretty sure that yeah, I forgot. I forgot that the finale was already here. No, I didn't. I mean, you can tell me about it if you want, but yeah, I didn't watch it yet. Yeah, well, was somebody alive? Yeah. <gasps> Yay! Oh, I gotta watch it now. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was the season finale. So. Yeah. Well, they definitely set up for a next season. So you saw the. Uh, so you saw Barbara get shot. Yeah, I saw everything except for the, the last okay, one. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, and she's like, well, and then Harley quits the bad, the bad family. Yes. Um, and then Barbara's like, I, I think I'm going to quit too. So they, so the Gotham City Sirens are forming. Oh, with Barbara, nice. With Barbara with them. Um, and Catwoman alerts them that Nightwing's body has been dug up. And so they see his empty coffin. And the very last bit is because now Talia's mad at, well, some stuff happens at Lex's birthday party. Um, and so like now all the evil business women are mad at um, Ivy. And so you see Talia and Damien on the edge of the Lazarus pit. And she says, your friend will come back different, but better. And then Nightwing comes out of the Lazarus pit and he says, where the f is Harley Quinn? Oh, nice. <laughs> and that's the end of the season. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I, I got to watch that. Yes. Oh, and it'd be funny. So obviously the show better get a fifth season now. Oh, Never. right. Because of course there's a joke because they're all standing around Nightwing's grave and Harley's like, the Gotham City Sirens will figure out who stole Nightwing's body. She's like, but like, after we have a weekend, because, you know, we need to relax. She's like, and I mean, what's going to happen? He's already dead. And then Batgirl's like, it's really not that funny. Because <laughs> the other is a laugh. And then you go to the scene where he comes alive. That's nice. I... <laughs> Yeah, I gotta watch that. You know, it'd, it'd be great for next season if uh, they did a thing where you know, since Bruce is in prison, if Dick tries to be Batman. Oh yeah, no, he's out of prison. He gets out of prison in the last episode. Oh uh, okay, of course he's a rich man. Okay, yes, that's right. Okay. Right, which I realized when he came in and did that, I was like, oh, you know what? I didn't miss him at all. He's really totally unnecessary to this show. <laughs> yeah, but it's so funny. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting, like the way Kelly Thompson writes that first issue, Birds of Prey, because they like Black Canary's recruiting and cast is like, oh no, we should go get Harley Quinn. And they're like, wait a minute, you're crazy. She's like, no, 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 because it's like Harley is so like chaotic. It's like Cass can't even read, you know, how Cass like reads body language. She can't read Harley because Harley's like wow. so chaotic. Yeah. I'm like, that's that, an interesting take. Yeah. Uh, that's that's very chaotic. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Hold on. Right. I got to refill my tea. But then we seriously have to get down to the comics. There's yeah. just been so much, Phil. So much. 
I know, I know. It's we're not uh, like on a weekly schedule anymore. Or it's only twice a month. So yeah, it, it, it pals up. Man, I can't believe I missed that uh, Harley Quinn finale. I forgot that was the finale. Although what, with what? the uh, with the writer strike, I don't know when the next uh, season of Harley is going to be out. So yeah, I don't know, but they set it up really well for whatever is going to happen. Um, I have to say, though, I think my favorite episode of the season was Il Bufo, or Il Bufo, where Bane goes to Italy. Yes, yes, yes. That episode was really good. <laughs> yes, Bane, yes, Bane learning to cook, and yes, yeah, to, uh, potato clones, yes. <laughs> Pretty good. Okay, I was thinking we should start with Teen Titans since it came out first. Yeah, 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 let's do and that. Also, yeah, they're we'll the youngest. Some... Yeah, and two. I mean, there's not a ton of dick in this, but. Yeah, although, so I saw, I think it was on Facebook or something random, but I was cracking up. Somebody had a post of the Wally cover that you had. Yeah. And they were like, they look like such teenagers on the cover, but inside the book, they look like they're 35. <laughs> <laughs> And that made me laugh. Oh yeah, I mean, Wally looks like a uh, Aero Postal model or something. Yeah, that's on the cover. Yeah. All right, so yeah, let's talk about World's Finest Teen Titans number three from last week. Uh, yes, the Titans go to Titan Con. Titans Con. Yep. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're taking all the selfies, and so one of the fans dressed like Robin's like, "Where's Robin? Is Robin with you guys?" <laughs> so of course we have to see in the Batcave, and uh, Batman saying, eh, "It's a good thing you didn't go." And uh... yes, but I want to point out, I do appreciate that Batman said, "Thank you for not joining your friends." It's the least he can do. <laughs> yes, exactly. He says it's like you know, you know, it's not conducive to keeping a secret identity if everyone's taking your picture. Because again, this is a modern take on this, so you know, everyone's got a smartphone, a camera, so right, yeah. Back in the 60s, they didn't have to worry about it exactly so much. Mm. Uh, But Dick, uh, you're not, I would, but I would argue our accessibility reminds people in trouble that we're there to help. (laughs) Bruce, that's not the same as craving the spotlight as Dick like jumps on the trapeze. Yeah. And he's like, you think I don't know that? Mm-hmm. He's like, I have to constantly remind myself this work isn't about being a celebrity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's your job as that... team leader. <laughs> yeah. But it's pretty hard to lead from in here. Don't forget to thank you. She's like, case, case discussion closed. You're not gonna. Mm, let me see. <clears throat> the Titans just checking out all the merch and attending the panels and getting mobbed by fans. Yeah, Bumblebee's all freaked out about you know people trying to take her mask off. Right. Um, not conducive to a secret identity. <laughs> uh, Roy like shooting an apple off a fan's head. Roy, and then Wally messing with his arrows. Yeah, he's like, here's the fireworks arrow, but nope. The oil slick, the oil slick arrow. Uh, Stick for me. Get out your checkbook money bags. Talking to what, really? <laughs> uh, I can't believe you don't have a dry cleaning arrow. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and then I think this is a well, a new uh, a new villain kind of because I don't remember. Are we calling him Toy Boy? Well, Ro- well, Dick does, but basically can like yeah. anim- animate these toys and even make them bigger. Like it takes a toy Batmobile and it grows to like regular size and almost runs people down. And a giant Donna Troy. Yeah. 
Batmobile gaining on Kid Flash, and he's like, how is that possible? <laughs> but, yeah, all the Titans are, like, uh, yeah, fighting off the Elise toys and stuff, and that's when Dick shows up and says, Titans, you're focusing on the wrong things. It's his hand gestures. Immobilize his hands. That's where we hit someone with the handcuff era. Although, I would just like to say, I saw a summary of this somewhere, and they were like, Toy Boy is trying to go after Donna Troy. And I was like, did we read the same comic? I'm pretty sure he's creeping on Bumblebee. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? <laughs> Yes, cause, yeah, cause, yeah. He's literally like, uh, from the moment I first saw you, you were for everything to me, brave, beautiful. My every fantasy made real, made real. Yeah, and he's touching her, and she was already feeling vulnerable from earlier. So he's really, yeah. Cause that's funny when Dick's like a ready to like knock him out, and she's like, "Oh no, I earned this." this Bumblebee knocks him out. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, she tells him, like, you don't know me. After that, touch anyone again without permission. There won't be enough left of you to help. Like, what is in mm -hmm. uh, the, Wally, I didn't think you were coming, but aren't you glad I did? Dick says, anybody curious as to how much worse things can spiral here? No. Then let's go. Speedy, no souvenirs. <laughs> So oh. and it gets serious and sad at the end. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we see uh no Charlie. Uh no more Golden Eagle, but now he's their social media manager. Yeah, uh, and he does. Oh, and then he's like, uh, oh, you know, is everything all right in the back cave? He's like, what, Dick, why wouldn't it be? I just find it interesting that everyone went home a few hours, home hours ago. Everyone but you went home a few hours ago. He's upset because it turned, because obviously he, you know, slipped out or whatever. Everyone's going to be mad, but it's like he showed up and he had to save the day, but it's like he didn't know he was going to have to save the day when he showed up. Yeah. yeah that, well, that reminded me, that just kind of reminded me a little bit of Teen Titans Year One. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he's, he's, he's gonna he's gonna have to be like, you know, he said I'm team leader, and they needed leading. But yes, Toy Boy gets sprung at the end by a shadowy figure who says, "Welcome to the Terror Titans." So, yep. seems we're gonna get some team battles here. But yeah, I thought it was good. How about you? Yeah. Of course, it's Mister. Of course, it's Mister Mark Wade. Uh, wrote such classics as diggity dink darn right he did yeah i mean i thought i particularly saw the conversation that dick and bruce had was good mm -hmm. oh yeah very believable right and like i said i appreciated that bruce was like thanks for not going and then dick was like yes but this is a problem if i'm supposed to be team leader you know that was good. Set it up nicely for the future. All right. So where do you want to go next? Nightwing or Titans? I mean, I should we go with Titans since we were just were with Titans? Okay. That's fine with me. So, I mean, this one we're basically uh, breaking into the Church of Eternity. Well, we see first we see Dick and Beast Boy breaking in. So I I didn't know Gar could do this unless they're going to address this later. But so Gar can become like a like several insects, not just one. Yeah, I was going to say that's new, isn't it? I because it so. used to just be he'd be one thing. I to mean, a certain see. extent, it makes more sense to me that. But I mean, it's common because it doesn't really make sense that he's a human and he can become stuff that's so tiny. It almost makes more sense that if he becomes something tiny, he becomes a lot of something's tiny. But yeah, but yeah, that, I don't know. I again, I mean, them something might be coming. So isn't there like a crossover coming up? Was it Beast World? Beast something? World. Yeah. Yes. I'm thinking we may address that. Uh, 
So they, so yeah, I saw it advertised as a crossover. So is are we going to be crossing over Titans and Nightwing, Nightwing's book maybe? Oh, in Beast World. Uh, let me see. I'm that what you're talking this. about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I thought I, I thought I had the. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah, this epic event, which continues in the oh, it must be starting. Yeah, by the end of the year. Uh, continues in January 2024, sets the stage for what's to come for the DC Universe, part of the Dawn of DC. Uh, Beast World will also connect into Tom Taylor's ongoing series, Titans and Nightwing. So I wonder if it's going to be like its own mini series, and then, yeah, it's going to go in the Titans. Yeah, Nightwing. it is. Yeah. Uh, it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, because, yeah, so we're also going to get Starro in here. Okay. So yeah, kids. So yeah, so if you were at questioning, yeah, could I didn't know Gar could turn into many insects. Maybe he can't. Maybe that's something that's coming. I'm sure it will all be revealed in the future. Yes. So yeah, so the yeah, Dick and uh, Gar checking out the uh, Church of Eternity, and then they see, yeah, it looks like oh well, they they're trying to say, they're trying to claim they're legit, but uh, we're, we're about to get a human sacrifice here. So they leap in to save uh, the girls about to be sacrificed, and then Dick's calling the rest of the team in. It's like our tight, our cover's blown. But then, yeah, as they're all ready to run off, Dawn is telling Wally, "No, you can't go." You know, uh, yeah, they've cut. They figured out his time of his time of death, and it's within the next forty-eight hours. So he's like, "Well, whatever." Well, he's like he's like the rest of you are about to go to risk your lives. Why can't you know? Why can't I? And I love he's, he's putting it in like, nah, we won't be happy. He's like, we can handle Dick's disapproval. <laughs> we faced mad gods and demons. We can handle Dick's disapproval. Yes. Um, you know what? When when they pop in and Dick's like a dangerous combination of what are we dealing with? A dangerous combination of unstoppable force and unquestioning belief. And then these boys like super strong zealots. That reminds me of in Pirates of the Caribbean. Remember when they're on the ship and oh. she's like using big fancy words. And then Barbarossa is like, we're not but humble pirates. And then at the end, he's like, I'm disinclined to acquiesce to your request. Means no. no. That's what it made me think of. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like when they are uh, Wally pops out of the boom tube and Dick's like, You're not you, you're not supposed to be in the field. And Wally, you can lose that argument later. <laughs> and, and Guard just telling uh Tempest, he's like, well, Your friends suck, <laughs> your new friends suck. Yes, so we get that splash page tight, Titans go. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure people have commented on this before, but it's also so funny that out of all the names in the world that in the Titans, we have both a Gar and a Garth. Yes. <laughs> Actually, it's Garth and Garfield, but yes. Right. <laughs> but it's still funny. I know. Uh, so yeah, so they take down all these cultists who I think I didn't say they got some like uh, extra strength from bathing in that blood. Yeah, in the pool of blood. Yeah, because usually that was reserved for their leader, but they're stuck. I guess they're not so that picky now. They become more democratic. That's yeah. nice. But then after they knock all them down, they find Brother Eternity tied up, and uh, he says, "Yeah." Uh, it's a difficult transition period and a group who were a little unsatisfied with the new direction and the new management. Mm. He goes, I'm pretty sure I was about to be sacrificed to her dad looking at Raven. Uh, Donna, I, uh, I assume the church will do what churches do and insist on handling this internally and Brother Eternity is like, no, it's, less, it's like uh, they were going to murder people. We'll call the authorities. Uh, then cyborgs yeah. are what I get thinking about that pool of blood. He's like, oh, no one should get their hands on that. So basically playing the innocent, and then uh yeah, Gar is basically talking to Garth and uh 
well they're all like you know come you know come help us and uh garth's like no uh we fought battles and you know the, the planet's still on a path to destruction and mm. but he basically wants the <laughs> wants to wipe out all he's talking about like getting rid of humanity <laughs> Gar's like, you want to get rid of us? I don't want get uh I don't want my friends to leave. I no longer believe this world can survive humanity. Mm. So yeah, brother attorney's basically like, oh yeah, he's you know, Gar's gonna help us uh help humanity with this next big leap. Yeah, he's like, don't worry about it. <laughs> but then we see Wally grab the uh, meteor that they the church had, so figure out what that is but then we see brother eternity yes he has some kind of hold on gar as uh it's like what is that it's like pl is that like plant plant life coming out of his mouth <laughs> i don't know it was super creepy yeah so I'm like ah probably like alien spores or something uh, yeah i mean it was definitely a good ending kept you uh which I mean, they, you knew they they you kind of knew he had to have some kind of mental hold on him, you know. All right, now another good issue again, a, you know, a Tom Taylor issue, and uh, and again, the art is I, I, the art is spectacular on all of these. All right, so should we get to Nightwing 106? Let's do it. All right, so Nightwing 106. Uh, and, and again, we don't get uh It's not Bruno Redondo art, but it, it, this artist kind of reminds... Again, you can tell it's not Bruno Redondo, but it's not that too dissimilar. Yeah, Bruno just did the cover, right? I believe so, yeah. I was gonna say, I mean, it looks uh, probably probably helps. Uh, I was gonna say, is it the, is that the same colors and stuff? It might be, uh, but no, we see. Uh, oh God, we actually get a uh, only Tom Taylor could pull this off. We get a flashback to two years ago to Rick Grayson. Uh, I know. A part of me was like, uh. I know. I was like on the edge of my seat. I'm like, oh, don't don't mess this up, Tom Taylor. But. Like I said, now that what um oh crap. Who was it that Dan Oh Dan Dan Jurgens, yes. Yes. Once Dan Jurgens tied it in with the Court of Owls and gave yeah. it a point, it was it sucked less. Now now I feel like the main problem with Rick is that it lasted too long. Yeah, again, it didn't help too that like the original writer left, and then it's like they had a fill in or two, and then yeah, Dan Jerkins had to come in and kind of be like, okay, let's pick a direction, let's go. So, yeah, the main problem was, I mean, it was over a year in our like real people time, and that was on almost two years, I think, uh, and that was un and that was uncool. It should have yeah. been like three months. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was basically two years because didn't go from like fifty to seventy five. That's something like that. I mean, it's a, it's, yes. I mean, it's about two years and a little, yeah, it's like two years and a month. So, yeah, I'm it trying to remember. Did we, it might have been a little less because did we, did we get two issues a month at some at one point? I don't know. I don't know. It's best <laughs> not to think about it because it's again, so just like just like Rick's memory, I kind of blocked that out. Uh. Exactly. Yes. Once they tied in with the Court of Owls, it made. It made sense. It felt like it had a purpose, mm -hmm. but it still went on too long. So basically, yeah, we see this guy who knows who knew Dick from the circus basically gives him this package and which has a book. Which uh, this is a retcon, right? This hadn't happened. No, this had not happened. Yeah, no. Yeah, okay, that's what I was thinking. So yeah, then we saw Rick at the bar and talking to B and saying. He doesn't want to open this, and he basically just wants to put it away somewhere safe. 
And he's like, yeah, I can't put it in a Bloodhaven bank, so. Mm, we see... Uh... But it is interesting. I mean, he does make a good point. It is sort of not for him, since he's... Yeah. A lot weird. But yeah, he calls the Quartermaster, who we saw a few issues back. Yep. Mm. So... Yeah, Tell that old guy, you require stowage. <laughs> and he's like, uh, I guess, yeah. It's an old salty sea captain, but yeah, he tells him it's locker 538. Well, you remember that? He's like, no, my memory's not great at the moment, though. And it's for in case someone comes back, meaning Dick. And what name should I put it under? He puts it under Nightwing. Oh, that's subtle. And then I'm assuming. He stays in bed most of the day because he doesn't want to have to deal with this. But Barbara's like, Nick, it's five in the afternoon. Mm. So, so are they at the ta Titan's Tower? Oh, yeah, they must be. Yeah, I was like, did he did he just crash there because it was convenient? I was like, doesn't he still have his apartment? Yeah. Hmm. But then Haley, run, Haley runs in. I guess her and Gar were playing. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Gar? <laughs> She's a dog. What's your excuse for jumping on her bed? Naturally high levels of enthusiasm. <laughs> That's right, Gar. So yeah, I think it, that could stick out of bed. Uh... Uh, I'm a little disappointed. Oh, no. Yes. Nice quality pajama pants there. But yeah, he says uh, about a week, couple weeks ago, he, uh, a strange sailor told me there was a box with my name on it. I have no idea what this is about. So I'm trying to remember. I so so he's forgotten stuff that that he did as Rick. Like I know Rick had forgotten stuff about Dick Grayson, but he's so he's forgotten. I mean, like the rest of us, he's forgotten stuff about Rick Grayson. <laughs> he's blocking a lot of that out. Well, I guess since. Now that we've established that it, that this, he was Rick because the um, Court of Owls were messing with his brain and were implanting it in there, I think that means that the writer can do whatever they want. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. But I was just... Uh, but, yes. When well, we, it's probably for the best. I guess when we reintegrated and brought his Dick Grayson memories back, yeah, we kind of wiped the hard drive of Rick Grayson yeah, right. for the most part, yeah. Hmm... Uh, so, but then it's finally time to ask, what's in the box? <laughs> Sadly, so many people are not going to get this. All the youths are not going to get that because that movie's old now. Uh, I love how uh, Gar's like. You uh, don't get it, y'all. Watch Seven. <laughs> uh Oh, of course, like, wait a minute, weeks ago, he's like, I would have, he's like, oh, he's like, you you ignored it for weeks, I would have exploded, and Dick's like, we've had a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> Night tires. Uh, yeah, then Heartless shows up. Yep. And he's like, you don't have an appointment, you know me? We pay attention when a brutal idiot walks our streets. <laughs> so yeah he gets in a fight yeah the quartermaster uh, stabs him but he's like that's not going to work mm, it w is there anyone who would miss you hurt me or threaten the hold and my daughter my daughter will hunt you down remember kids daughter uh, and Heartless goes perfect and kills him takes his heart just like he did Blockbuster uh, and he's still with Zuko Mm, but when they go down, yes, the hold is gone. The ship is gone. Giant dinosaur. Yep. Uh, then an hour later, Dick's there with uh, Maggie Sawyer. Mm. I love... <laughs> he was known as the Quartermaster. That's not a name. <laughs> mm. But yeah, Dick's like, yeah, because they... They all say they've been searching for Heartless and things like, yeah, he hasn't left the trace. This is the first sign of him since the prison break. Yeah, that was like, what, 100, I think? So. Yeah, yeah. 
So, and then Barbara calls him and says, uh, the paramedics that took the bodies, the facial recognition on your mask camera came up blank. So Dick says, uh, I know very little. It tells Maggie, uh, the commissioner, I know very little, but I'll share whatever I can. I just have to chase something down first. Meaning the ambulance. Thank you. I hope you're right. Otherwise, I'm a superhero chasing an ambulance. So, yeah. So, yeah. Barbara takes control of the bike and he jumps in the ambulance. Mm. He's like, <laughs> okay, people, body snatching doesn't make a great first impression. I'm willing to talk before jumping to conclusions. I love Barbara. I appreciate your attempt at diplomacy there. Uh, I love these idiots, the one you're stuck in here with us. There's nowhere. And Dick just like, pfft. two moves. They're down. Two guys down. Mm. And then Barbara's like, Nightwing, I don't suppose the ambulance is also a hovercraft. Why? Because your GPS is in the harbor. Because we see it's on a ship, kids. Uh, so he jumps out of the ambulance and says, uh, facing a bunch of armed gunmen, they say, don't move. Then a voice says, lower your guns, all of you. One of the guys says, I, Captain Blood, B-U-L-D. Uh, and he says, Captain Blood. And I'm assuming this is the daughter, kids, because it's B. Oh, snap! Full circle! I thought... You know what? I was like, man, after the whole Rick Grayson debacle, I didn't know if we were ever going to see B again. And Yeah, it was a quality callback. I'm excited to see where it goes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. So this should be interesting. Most so Definitely. So what do you think's in the book? I mean, we've we we've, we've done this version of the story many times. Like, you know, you know, was there some kind of something going on at that circus back in the day and stuff? So what do you think's in that book? I don't know. <laughs> I know. Was it there was there like a dangling plot they never picked back up? Remember uh during uh Batman reborn <clears throat> when Dick becomes Batman and like he finds like a hard well, drive. I, yes, but you know what? I'm pretty sure that was the Court of Owls. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. I, I think they didn't mention that's my guess is that that hard drive that he found that if Bruce hadn't come back to life that the Court of Owls would have been something that Dick took down. So I'm guessing it was still would have been like he was supposed to be a talent, but he would have dealt with it as Batman okay. instead of like subsidiary, but I don't know. Guess we'll see. Uh oh, and then we get another backup story to justify the 499. Yeah, it feel, right. It feels like it might be something court of hours, but I'm wondering if it won't be that because it feels like it should be any more so misdirected. Exactly. But yeah, we get the backup of uh, Dick uh, Dick training with Cass and then teaching her how to cook. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is weird. Like the, the guy outside watching, you know, watching them and stuff. Because you know, then when Step shows up, he the guy's like, how many broads is this guy dating? And it's like, wait a minute. It's Dick in his 20s and both of these two are like under 18. I'm pretty they sure. must both be over 18. I see, I feel like the I thought way... they were... oh, they might be in college. I was gonna say I thought it was high school, but they might be in college. Yeah, yeah. I think I or just the I way think. that they're making them all behave, it seems like Damien is the only one underage now because Tim has moved out. Cass and Steph like always didn't really live there, so I think they've yeah. gotta be. Yeah, that's true. Mm. So I'm assuming, are they? Like, I'm assuming someone's like it, maybe going to attempt to kidnap Dick because you know, at the end, the guys all. I'll see you again soon, money bags. Yeah. So yeah, not a lot of action in this one. Basically, just fight training and then 
making the perfect pancakes. I love Cass burns the first ones and they're like, even Haley won't eat them. Yeah, it seems like I don't know if this is they're going to find out or if it's just supposed to be a funny joke that Steph walks by and the guy's peeing so he doesn't see her in the outfit. Oh, yeah. See, that'll teach him. That'll teach him to urinate in public. So yeah, I just wonder if this could be a funny one where they're just like, and it's just like, yeah, somebody's gonna try to uh, kidnap Dick for ransom or something, and not knowing who who they have. Because that that's <laughs> that's like a thing I see oh, always pops up on social media every so often, where it's like someone someone put you know what you know what i want to see i want to see a movie where like for some reason just because of a story he wrote that like like the cia or somebody tries to assassinate clark kent they don't know he's superman so it's just like every time they try to kill him they're like why doesn't this guy die you know what's going on and it's just that, that would be a different yeah that would be different just, I, I could see something like that where you know they think they're just like gonna die uh, Kidnap some spoiled rich guy. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. it's Nightwing. Yeah, right. yeah. Hopefully, it's more of a funny one because it felt like it should be. <laughs> yeah. All right. One last thing, I have to put in a plug. We'll have to add in when we start. Now that the webtoon they've started coming in, having it come out in print. Oh, Rain nice. Family Adventures, we'll have to add it into the rotation. I mean, not all of them. Uh, Dick's not in all of them because, you know, it's, you know, they need to cover yeah. everybody. But there are some good ones. Heck yeah. Including the one where they have the they have this Mario Kart competition and the punishment, the loser has to wear the disco wing outfit. Oh, jeez. And when Dick finds out, he's like, I don't understand why my outfit is a punishment and not a reward. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, so amazing. Oh, exactly. All righty. All right, anything else? I think that's it. It covers everything. All right. All right, kids. So, yes, uh, next week we'll get another classic review, Nightwing 54 and 55 uh, from the Chuck Dixon era. And then, again, you'll get, well, there's an extra week now. But, 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 no, no, that's not until November. All right. So, yes, then, then next time you'll get two more Electric Mullets uh, Superman episodes. And then next month in October, you'll get, yes, your new issue review. And then the second episode for October, a few days before Halloween, we're going to do DC vs. Vampires. That's right. For Halloween. With the greatest king of the vampires. All right. So, yes. So, send us your thoughts. Send us your thoughts on these new issues. What did you think? Uh, did you love him? I know you did. All right. So, especially if you're Tom Taylor, yes, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And remember, you can find all things uh, capes and lunatics episode, social media, merchandise, the Patreon. Uh, please uh, help us support this thing. Uh, please subscribe to the Patreon, like our good friends, Justin. Ray Russell and uh, Moz do so. Find everything at tubespace.io slash capes and lunatic podcast network. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatic podcast network. And while you have that wallet out, go on to Amazon again, any time of the year. Uh, go pick up Dick Grace and Boy Wonder again. If you're a fan of uh, Dick Grace and in any of his incarnations, pick up Dick Grace and Boy Wonder. You will learn something new. And once again, help support an educator. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, again, we'll be back in one week. 
for Nightwing 54 and 55. But yeah, in October, I mean, that'll be uh, that whole DC vs. Vampires thing. I mean, we covered that as it was coming out. But we were like, oh, this happened, this happened, this happened. Just covered the one. I can't wait to read the whole thing as a whole. I haven't done that. Yet. Yes. See if they telegraph the big reveal. All right, kids. Remember, join us next time. Join us same wing time. Same wing channel. Night, Night wing news. <laughs>